guys, it's Rogley here and we're doing another tutorial. This week's topic is photo or image manipulation and we're looking at ways that we can combine different pictures together to give us new and interesting effects. And while this may not necessarily classify as um, photography directly, um, I still consider this a form of photography since we are combining different pictures together to make new ones and to make interesting effects. Again, it's up to you whether you classify it as photography or not. Here are the foes we are working with. We got some damaged buildings. We got some kind of a desert scene. We got a girl in a gas mask. We got a metal texture. We got a sign. And we got this picture with very dramatic clouds. We're gonna start by launching Photoshop. We're not actually gonna open up any of these just yet. We're gonna go into Photoshop and we're gonna let that load. And that was quick. We're gonna to go to File, New. And we're gonna just say, okay, here we go. And for our size, we're gonna make it a letter size paper. We're gonna go eight and a half by 11. Our resolution, we're gonna to set to 150. Generally, if you wanna print, uh, you should keep it at 300, but I'm gonna, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to let this run a little quicker by going to 150. And for our background contents, we're going to go to transparent and we're going to hit OK. So there is our blank document. We got nothing in there. We got the checker box that shows us that it's transparent. We're going to slide this over and we're going to open up our damaged buildings to start. So just drag them to Photoshop. And there we go. So we got two tabs now. We got our damaged buildings and we got our untitled one. And in this file, first we're going to move it over. So I switch to the Move tool. I'm going to just drag it over to Untitle 1 and drop it in there. And it's going to give me a warning. That's fine. I'm going to say OK. And we're just going to line it up to the corner. And I'm going to press Command T to scale it up. Remember to hold Shift. You'll notice on the right-hand side of this image, we got a couple people um, I'm going to scale it until they disappear so that they're not in our scene. And then I'm going to hit return. I just want to make a quick mention that the photos I'm using in this tutorial are not my own. Um, I take no credit for the photos themselves. I'm just showing a technique here that uh, hopefully is educational to you. All right, so we got our first image in there. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a clear area where the sky is right now because we've got a very boring, lifeless sky. So we're going to go to the magic wand. That's the fourth one down. We're going to make sure that we have the add to selection button on. And we're going to change our tolerance to 16 in this case because that works well with this image. And we're going to start clicking in the sky area as you can see, clicking along. Now we've got to make sure we get the insides of the windows here as well. Click each of those. Whoops, just missed that one there. Ooh, that's a tricky one for some reason. Get that one there. Get all these little spaces where you would see the sky through. All right, don't worry if it's not perfect. We can go and fix it up after. All right, so we got the uh, sky selected in all those windows and in the background. And now we're just going to hit delete on the keyboard so that that area is no longer with us. Press command D to deselect and press command zero so we can see our entire image. Next, we're going to open the desert grass scene in Photoshop. There it is. We're going to use the move tool and we're going to drag it into this photo. Now we notice that it goes on top of the buildings, which is, which is not what we want. We want to drag that layer below and now it's underneath. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to match horizons. You can see that there's a horizon in the original picture and there's a horizon in the buildings picture. Okay, so we got the desert and the, so we're going to bring the horizons together and then we're going to press command T. We don't have to worry about holding shift here. We're just going to stretch the picture down so that the ground fills up the bottom of the picture. Just like that. 
All right, that's not looking too good right now because nothing matches and uh, these look horrible together, but we'll fix that very shortly. We're gonna go to that layer with the uh, desert and I'm gonna just use the rectangular selection. I'm gonna select the sky area to about there. I'm just gonna hit delete. We're gonna get rid of that. All right, so we don't have that extra hanging off there. Go to your layer with the buildings and add a layer mask by clicking the layer mask button. Choose the paintbrush and let's create something like this. First of all, set the hardness to about, I don't know, let's try 70% and paint out along these rocks. Ooh, that's a little too hard. Go to about 50, make it softer. We want it to have a nice transition between the two. We're gonna just create this effect. Now, the cool thing about image manipulation and, and doing this, you know what, I'm really not happy with that. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna bring my hardness right down to about 20%. And that's okay, sometimes you revise as you go. All right, this looks much better. You want a little bit of a transition between the two so that they blend in nicely later. We're gonna leave the bridge on the side here and we're gonna just get rid of all of this so that we have the muddy sort of desert and the broken down buildings like that. And we kind of got it going up into there. All right, so what we've done is we have created a mask that allows these two to transition from one to another. And when you're doing this, what you're trying to do is create air, making it more difficult to tell where one photo ends and the other begins. Now, obviously we, obviously we can tell because the color is so different in these two images. So we're going to select the desert ground layer. We're gonna to go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and we're gonna pull out that saturation out of that image, just like that. So it's gonna become a lot more gray. We're gonna hit okay. We could tweak the hue in that if we really wanted to. I'm gonna leave it as is. And we're going to hit OK. Now you notice that this contrast in this image is much more than, than in this one. So we're going to go to Image Adjustments, Brightness Contrast. And we're going to tweak that contrast so that it matches the intensity of the city scene. We're going to hit OK. Then we're going to go to Image Adjustments, Color, so color Balance. And we're going to just tweak the color of the ground itself so that it matches it almost matches that gray of the concrete a little more. We hit OK. Now if you feel that it needs a little more of a contrast adjustment, you can do that at any time. Again, these are just general guidelines to get a good starting point. Okay, so now you can see that the two blend better, much better together. All right, um, they're never gonna be perfect, but you know, the, the more you do this, the more creative you are and the more you kind of tweak it, the better you can get it. All right, so we now have this city or broken city with the cracked ground underneath. So kind of interesting. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add that dramatic sky. So we're going to go to our Road to Perdition is the name of the file. We're going to open that up with Photoshop. There it is. And we're going to drag it and move it into the layer sorry, the untitled one file. And we're gonna move that layer down below everything else. So it's now the lowest layer. Now, command, press Command T to transform it and we're gonna just kinda stretch it into place here. Don't worry too much about pressing Shift here unless your clouds look really um, stretched. But we just want those dramatic clouds up in the sky here. Now, same deal as the uh, ground that we just fixed up. We're going to go to Image Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. We're going to take out some of the saturation out of that sky so it kind of matches the intensity of the scene we're, we're working in here. You could change the hue depending on how much of an apocalyptic look you want to the sky. All right, we're going to hit OK. I'm going to go do some uh, little bit of color balance, just a tiny bit, just to... Again, make the sky a little more interesting and, and just whatever suits your needs or uh, however you like it to look and hit OK. 
All right, that doesn't look too bad, but if I zoom in on this image, you'll notice all these ugly little parts that I missed with the magic wand. So I could take the eraser um, and I'm going to select, sorry, I, instead, we're gonna do it the right way. We're gonna select our mask and I'm going to choose the brush tool, making sure that my foreground color is set to black. I'm gonna just paint out some of the areas that look weird and increase my hardness of the brush. And I'm just gonna fix that up a bit. Now, it's still gonna look pretty bad, but I'm gonna show you something else we can do to make it look like it belongs a little bit more in the scene in a second here. All right, so actually, you know what? I kinda like that tower there. I'm gonna leave that tower in there. It's kinda cool. All right, so you could go, and if I was gonna be really meticulous here, I could go and clean up all the little pieces I missed with the magic wand, but again, I'm not too concerned with that because in a second, we're going to remove all those stray little parts. All right, so something like that, cleaned up some of the little bits and pieces. Oh, I got a little bit more here. Again, remember that the uh, magic wand doesn't do a perfect job when it comes to, you know, getting rid of uh, getting rid of similar colors unless the color is perfectly even throughout. And we can see that it wasn't because we got all these little pieces left behind. All right, so here's what we're going to do. If you look at this photo, it looks really weird right now because we got this sky or not the sky, but this um, area of the photo going off into the distance and it's becoming lighter. If this really was a bright sky and this was in the foreground, um, this would actually be silhouetted against that sky. So a way we can do that is we're going to switch, see that the layer's in two parts, we're gonna switch to the left part, the left thumbnail, and we're going to use the burn tool. And the burn tool is located right here. It'll probably be on the dodge tool which looks like a lollipop, but the burn tool is the hand. And you want to make sure that you're, mid, you're set to mid-tones up here and your exposure is 50%. The way the burn tool works is you have to kind of color over an area a few times before you actually notice an, a noticeable difference. But I really like it because we can paint basically shadows in wherever we want. So I'm going to start by darkening this corner up here where, like I said, the sky would be silhouetted against that really dramatic sky. And you can see what it's doing. It's really darkening it up nicely to create that silhouette. And if you are somewhat artistic, you would have your farthest parts really darkly silhouetted and just slowly bringing the light areas forward. I'm also gonna do the same to the building because the buildings would be silhouetted by that really strong sky as well. The cool thing about the burn tool is that you can get really creative and you can add or remove shadows depending on if you switch to the dodge tool to lighten areas up. You can really be creative in how the light is cast across the scene. All right, so I'm just kind of imagining, okay, if the light's back here, there's gonna be a shadow in here. All right, we're gonna have some shadows on the back sides of the rocks here. All right, and you can see, whoops, you can see how I am uh, affecting the image by creating those shadow areas. If I go back, you can really see the difference in what I'm doing. Now, like I said, if you want to get really creative, you can, you know, tweak it until it's perfect. But for the sake of the tutorial here, I'm just trying to get through it uh, to show you the technique. All right, now, um, again, this, sky, this ground is bugging me a bit. I'm gonna increase the contrast a little bit more just so that everything's a little darker and it matches better. And you can see how that made a nice difference there. Now everything is, you know, looking like it belongs together. All right, so next we're gonna go and uh, get the image of the gas mask, gas mask girl. Try saying that 10 times fast. And you'll notice in this image that I've already created a selection. Well, where is it? You have to go to the channels tab. And if you notice, you got your layers and then you got a tab that says channels. And there's the selection I've created. It's called girl. If I select it, there's the selection I made. I'm going to hold the command key and I'm going to click that channel and 
she becomes selected. Now I'm going to switch back to the layers and I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to move her into the scene. It's going to ask me again, do I want to switch? Sure. And I'm going to bring her up to the top like so. And you notice that she's way too big for the scene. We're going to go Command T and we're going to shrink her down so that she's not quite so big. In this case though, uh, she's coming towards the camera doing some kind of weird thing with her hands. But we're going to just shrink her down so she's going off camera a little bit here. That looks good to me. But you'll notice the same problem. She doesn't match her surroundings very well. And if you notice really carefully here, I missed a couple areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the eraser in this case. I'm going to have a, a really hard brush in the 90s. And I'm going to just go and erase those parts I missed. Just mainly that little area there seems to be about the worst. Command zero. Okay, so we're going to tweak her color tone a little bit so she looks like she belongs in the scene a little more. And we can do that again by using color balance or hue and saturation. Or my favorite, selective color. So let's go to selective color. And we can pull down the reds, for example, here. We can make it look like her... You know, she's pretty sickly looking, kind of greenish. All right, like she just survived some sort of a, an apocalypse. Then we're going to go to, we can affect the whites, neutrals, and blacks here all at once if we want to kind of do a quick overall adjustment. So I'm doing the whites right now. And we can give her a more contrasty look. Neutrals. See how that's really affecting the color on her in a not so nice way. All right. And blacks. Okay, the color of her dress, obviously. Something like this. Tweaking it and okay. So let's look at the before and after. So you can see she was really light and we darkened her up and made her skin a little more pronounced. We can also go into the brightness and contrast, bring the brightness down a bit on her contrast, bring it up and hit OK. Now if we want to add a little more interest to her, we can use the burn tool again. We can just darken the edges of her. Okay, so we're creating more shadow on her skin, kind of make her look a little dirtier. Okay, kind of like that. We can also add a bit of a shadow on the ground so she doesn't look like she's just floating there. So I'm going to choose the ground layer. And I'm going to just paint. You can see how a small shadow is coming underneath her by doing that. It just adds a little more realism to the scene. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go to the no road sign. Road closed. We're going to open that in Photoshop. Same deal here, I've created a selection under channels. There it is. And I'm going to hold command to create that selection. And I'm going to move that sign over to the other picture. And I'm going to bring that up to the top as well. All right, the sign is way too big and it's way too intense. It doesn't look like it belongs there. So we're going to press command T. We're going to shrink it down holding shift. And I'm going to make it look like it's obviously been worn a bit. Um, it's not standing perfectly straight anymore. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to try to make it look like it's stuck in the mud. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. All right, so let's just kind of put it at, at an angle. Make it look like it's fallen over a bit. First thing you notice is the colors are just way too intense on this sign compared to everything else. So we're going to go to image adjustments. Hue and saturation, we're going to pull that down so we get a lot more muted colors. And again, that's going to match much better with what the colors are in the rest of the scene. And now we can zoom in on the bottom of the sign here. And I could use a layer mask. I'm just going to use the eraser in this case. And I'm just going to erase. I'm going to bring this down to about 70%. I'm just going to erase the part of the bottom because if it's perfectly straight it's not going to look very realistic as far as you know sticking in the mud or whatever so 
we got to erase it a bit so it's not so perfect, kind of like that. And then same deal here with the burn tool. Okay, because the, uh, in my opinion, the light is behind, coming from behind, we're going to create a bit of a shadow along the edges of this sign. As you can see, it's being added. We're going to roughen it up a bit. We're going to add a shadow down at the bottom because that's where there would be a shadow. All right. Then we're going to choose the ground layer. We're going to add a bit of a shadow on the ground layer of where the sign's shadow would be kind of projecting on the ground. I'm going to undo that a bit because I don't like it. I think it should be more over here. And this is just little subtle effects that's going to make your image look more realistic in the end. By no means am I, you know, spending the amount of time I should be spending on it to make it look really, really, re really, really realistic. That's a lot of reallys. Um, let's go back to the girl here for a second. I'm going to just bring down the saturation of her a bit because I think she's too intense as far as the rest of the scene goes here. Maybe something a little more like that. Okay, we're getting there. Now you can see how we have combined all these different elements together and it's starting to look like one complete image, which is what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the metal texture. Open it with Photoshop. There it is. And we're going to drag this over to our image. Let's make sure it's on top of everything. Drag it to the corner, press Command T, and enlarge it so it fills the entire scene. Now you might be wondering, why the heck would you do that? We're going to add a bit of a rough texture to the uh, overall picture. And so we're just going to use a blending mode and we're going to change it, in this case, to soft light. Or we could change it to overlay couple different effects there. I actually like overlay a bit more. You can see what that did is that roughened up the picture quite a bit. All right, you can see the roughness that's been added and what that does is it helps to combine the elements within the scene. Um, you can see that the scratches obviously go through the different elements and that helps it to be more unified. Looks like an old photo that survived some sort of a disaster obviously. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, again, add a little more realism to this shot and we're going to add an adjustment layer. And an adjustment layer is down here at the bottom of the layers palette. It's the half circle, half black, sorry, half light and half dark circle. We're going to click that and we're going to choose photo filter. All right, photo filters are really excellent uh, adjustment that can be made to your photos or to your um, you know image manipulations like what we're doing here and what it does is it adds a colored filter to the overall image so we can change it to either be a warming filter or a cooling filter you can see that really changes the color of the scene and also the mood of the scene you can try different colors here we can make our own from the color pull down all right we can do all sorts of crazy things to make our photo a little more realistic or at least give it an effect that it looks a little more interesting. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one we pick here. I'll go with a cooling filter. You'll notice the density can be adjusted so that that filter becomes more intense. That's kind of crazy. Or we can pull it right down where it's making just a very subtle adjustment to the scene. So I'm going to go a little more subtle on this one. All right, so that is an adjustment layer. We can also add another one and we can call this or use color balance in this case. We're going to leave it on mid-tones and we're going to just kind of tweak the scene a bit, make it a little bit more interesting. You don't want to go overboard, but obviously I am here for the sake of this picture. There it is, looks good. One last thing, we're going to add a new layer. We're going to go edit fill and we're going to fill it with black. Okay, we're going to set the opacity down to 60% and we're going to add a layer mask. We're going to use the brush tool and we're going to use a big brush and very, very soft, hardness down to zero. And with that black brush, we are going to paint a custom vignette just like so. 
So we're going to paint it over our subject and over the parts that we want to stand out in this case. All right, and we get this really crazy effect. Now we can pull it down or increase it depending on how much we want that effect to show. Now the neat thing about these adjustment layers and the reason I like using them as opposed to just going to image adjustments is we can always go back and change them. Let's say I think that that photo filter looks too intense. I could double click it, all right, and I can change that at any time. You know, maybe I want it to be more of a warmer filter instead. You know, maybe I like that better, okay, or, or I want to change the color of it. Um, yeah, I can really quickly do that here. I can change the density. I can make any adjustment to it after the fact to make my photo look better. I can do the same thing with the color balance one I added. You know, maybe that didn't look good to me, so I can go and tweak it some more until I'm happy with that. All right, so let's just look at that in full screen mode here. Okay, that is the effect that you are going for. All right, if you got that far and you created that image, then you did hopefully you learned a few things on how to combine different pictures together. Again, we're going to be using that in... Uh, in our upcoming assignments, so make sure you at least understand the basics of combining pictures. Um, I see too many students that just combine pictures that don't really look like they belong together. Um, you need to pick photos or take photos that um, have similar lighting that look like they belong together and then using these sort of techniques you can make um, a composite or an image manipulation of multiple pictures that kind of looks convincing, kind of looks interesting. All right. Hope you got through that. Make sure you save your work. I'm going to just save it here to the desktop. I'm going to call it Apocalypse. Apoc oh, Apocal okay, I'm not really sure if that's right or not. I'm going to hit OK. All right. Hope you got through that. Until next time, good luck.